Welcome to The Daily for Tuesday, May 13th with Simon Borg. I'm Jason Seguini, and yesterday the talk on MLSsoccer.com was that Ball Boy incident in Portland. We'll call it Ball Boy Gate 2, and it was Mario DeLuna stealing the ball away from the ball kid, and this has obviously been an issue. Around, we've seen it in Europe. We've seen it in MLS. So what is coming of this incident. Simon, you have you went over on instant replay yesterday. Give the details of the event. Jason, 85th minute, ball goes out of play. Mario DeLuna of Chivas USA thinks it's his ball. So he's rushing, they're losing the game, uh, rushing to get the ball. Ball boy's right there. He's looking to get the ball from the ball boy. The ball kid denies him the ball, so he forcibly takes it from him. Then when he gets back on the field about to do the throw, he realizes it's Portland ball. So the ball kid, according to league guidelines, was in the right denying Chivas USA's Mario DeLuna the ball because it was Portland ball. Silvio Petrescu, the referee, indicated it. Um, but I believe that ball kids, maybe, maybe it results in a change of the guidelines, should not be denying the ball to players and because those are the kind of incidents that I think stem from that. All right, I mean the, the counter argument here, Simon, I have to mention it, is that any player at any time can go over to a ball kid and say, give me the ball, and if the ball kid isn't going with any sort of instruction, he's going to give the ball to the wrong team. There are going to be times where the teams are trying to delay the game. There are going to be times where teams are trying to stop momentum from the other team. You have to you give a simple instruction. Follow the referee's call. Give that team the ball. I say let the referee sanction those instances. So if a player is purposely grabbing the ball and time wasting, let the referee slap him with a yellow or, or provide other sanctions. The other question here is if we're going to allow ball kids to function that way, to, 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 to have that role in a game, mm -hmm. I think we need to evolve from ball kids to ball persons. Have adults there that can manage that kind of situation. Don't put the kids in the heat of the battle, in the heat of the game. All right, that's a fair point, and that's interesting to see what comes of that. Um, maybe get Peter Walton from Pro to uh, weigh in on that thought, Simon. Um, another thing we got to mention from yesterday, a comment came in from Shad Hussein on The Daily yesterday, and he said, we didn't get any thoughts on Seattle and Vancouver's dominating victories over LA and San Jose, so give me your thoughts here. Well, if you want to use the word dominating, Seattle is the appropriate uh, team to use it with. They won 4-0 over San Jose, the game fell perfectly for them, festive atmosphere at CenturyLink, and they really showed up for the game. Um, so I'd like to though see Seattle put a string of these together because their match in Kansas City, although it was a win, wasn't that great. So I'd like to see him put a few of these performances together. Vancouver, I thought they were opportunistic against a, a dangerous LA side. LA, I think, had the run of play, had the best chances. Vancouver couldn't string uh, too many passing sequences together, but they get the goals, get the result, and I think it's something to build on. Interesting, the Vancouver and LA for me. I thought Vancouver was impressive enough, especially getting the victory over an LA team that had the defense together. I think there were a lot of pieces missing, really, for both teams. We've seen Rennie mix and match the lineups, but getting that performance from Tebert is something that they will look forward to moving forward. And of course, on your Seattle comment, they have a chance this weekend to really prove something to MLS. FC Dallas, the overall league leaders, coming to town. We'll see what Seattle can do against them. Well, this week at MLSsoccer.com, it's the second edition of Referee Week. A lot has happened since the last time we did it two years ago, including the formation of Pro, and that's gone a long way towards improving refereeing and, and better organizing the whole thing. And Simon, Referee Week here at MLSsoccer.com, we are going to open the doors to refereeing, the world of referees, step inside and find out what's going on. Yeah, and there's going to be an in-depth look at Pro, one of the many features coming up in Referee Week. Uh, Jeff Bradley will take a look at the inside workings of the MLS Disciplinary Committee, which obviously works in conjunction uh, with what the referees do on the field. Then the Disciplinary Committee uh, takes it then after, after the fact, off the field, uh, and, and sanctions players and behavior on the field. Then uh, another thing that I'm looking forward to this, this week is you make the call, a new feature where they show you a video, see how good you are and if you think you can do a ref's job. Uh, so that's going to be fun to watch. And also another piece on aspiring refs, where this young crop, the new generation of referees is coming from. And we're seeing a lot of them in MLS right now. All right, another uh, interesting feature that we're going to have on the video side is we put a camera on a referee in a reserve league game. And for the first time, we're going to see from a referee's perspective what the game looks like. And this is something that's building towards something bigger and better. We'll tell you about it in the future. It's two-part series Thursday and Friday on MLSsoccer.com. Time to check out this week's Castrol Index update. 
And at the top of the list, one of the younger players in MLS had a good week, got himself a goal. That is Diego Fagundes of the New England Revolution. And Jason, more attacking stars. We've seen goalkeepers on this list in previous weeks. This is about attackers. Thierry Henry, number two, followed by Diego Valeri of the Portland Timbers at three. Will Bruin, big performance against DC. He's at four. And then Michael Sperning, here's the goalkeeper, Seattle Sounders keeper at five. All right, you talked about attacking players. You had a couple great attacking players on Extra Time Radio yesterday. Simon, tell us about them. Yep, we had Kai Kamara and Juan Agudelo. Kai Kamara of Sporting Kansas City, Agudelo now of New England Revolution. Two of the most intriguing personalities right now with stories to tell. Kamara about his return from Norwich City in the English Premier League. He tells us how he felt he did, what kind of impression he left. Then Agudelo, talking about the move, and we heard about Chalice, uh, the manager at Chivas, saying he didn't know about it. Uh, so Agudelo really gives us the inside scoop and a look at what his future could entail. All right, you can listen to that on MLSsoccer.com. You can also, of course, get it on iTunes or Stitcher Radio. Also on MLSsoccer.com, starting lineup will be out. Myself and Andrew Wiebe telling you how to set your fantasy team ahead of the Wednesday night game this week. The Philadelphia Union and the LA Galaxy playing two games, including that Wednesday night affair. That's all we have on the Daily Today. We'll be back with plenty more tomorrow.